Hello, I'm Rob Satloff, the director of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. What was new in Benjamin Netanyahu's speech to Congress? There's a lot of back and forth on the politics and the theater of what Bibi Netanyahu said before the senators and the congressmen. But what I want to focus on is what was new. There are accusations that there was nothing new. In fact, there were at least two very important new innovations in what Netanyahu had to say. Whether they have an impact on what you think about the coming Iran deal is, is, is up to you, but it's important to underscore what was new in what he said. First, Netanyahu gave not just a critique about the, uh, the Iran deal as he sees it being formulated, he gave an overarching general critique about U.S. Middle East policy. Not just the negotiations, but the overall policy. It was almost 20 minutes into the speech before he began to talk about the Iran nuclear deal. First, he talked about America in the Middle East. He talked about the battle against ISIS. He talked about America and its relationship with its allies. And what was his critique? His critique was that America, in his view, has it backwards. That the battle against ISIS is occupying first place, top priority, when in fact, in his view, the campaign against Iran's regional aggression, the campaign against Iran's regional ambitions, of which the nuclear, um, uh, the nuclear effort is only a part, that, he says, should take first priority. He critiqued the idea that America is now focused so much on the war against ISIS that many in Washington even see Iran as a potential partner in this effort. But if you turn that around, he says, and if you put Iran and stopping Iran's regional ambitions at the top of the agenda, then in his view, you get a better sense of priorities both for the United States and for America's regional partners, including Israel. That overarching critique is something I think most of these congressmen and senators never heard before. Second, and much more specifically and related to the Iran nuclear arrangements, Bibi Netanyahu took on headfirst perhaps the most important claim that advocates of the emerging deal are making, namely that it will provide America and the West with a year warning of possible Iranian breakout. This is a year to know that the Iranians have made a strategic decision to achieve the necessary fissile nuclear material for a nuclear bomb. Netanyahu, in a very important but often overlooked part of his speech, said Israel intelligence has a different view. That even if you take the scenario presented by the administration here in Washington, Israeli intelligence says that the amount of warning will be significantly less than the year often promised by advocates of the emerging deal. I believe this is going to emerge in the coming weeks as a major um, point of contention between advocates and critics of the deal that is, that, is, uh, that is being negotiated. The amount of warning time to break out is at the core of what this agreement is all about. Less warning time, worse deal. More warning time, better deal. If there is truly a, uh, a deep division between American and Israeli intelligence, the professionals, about how much warning time the West has to, de to detect whether Iran is truly pushing for a nuclear bomb, then there will be a fundamental reconsideration of, the, of how much this deal really provides us in terms of an advantage. Beyond these two new elements that Netanyahu injected into, into the debate, he did remind everyone of the issues that aren't in 
the deal. These are questions that are on people's minds, questions that serious observers from the editorial board of the Washington Post to my colleague Dennis Ross, who served as President Obama's Iran advisor early in, uh, in his administration, say are deserving of answers. Questions of what do we do if Iran cheats? Will we know enough about Iran's past military efforts? What about ballistic missiles? Working with our allies in Europe, in the Arab world, and Israel now to address these questions, even before a deal is finalized, is essential if we want there to be a cohesive, coherent, international uh, understanding that this deal is in our collective best interests. The Obama, the Obama administration still has time to answer these questions. We hope that they do. Answering these questions now will not only build up the alliance structure necessary to ensure that a good deal is enforced for years to come, but answering these questions now will tell the Iranians that we and the allies are on the same page. Thank you.